Hello everyone, it's Old Guardian here, and this is a guide to one of the best comps for Mythic Boss Rush, the Fire Comp. As always, Fire Comp is built around Baron Geddon. There are plenty of options. This is what I have been running with. I will talk about this one. I will talk about all of the options. I will talk about what tech choices you may need to do as well. But overall, when you go to Mythic Boss Rush, you want to upgrade all of the abilities at least to level 10. Because level 10 is where the first time it gets more expensive. So for example, I have made a couple of mistakes with my Geddon. These should not be 15, 10 would be perfectly fine. I mean, 15 is the next breakpoint. So if I had a lot of extra reno, then everything to 15 is the next point. So yeah, sure, that still works. But overall, instead of, say, upgrading Living Bomb to 15, I should have just upgraded Molten Blade to 10, got more stats out of that with less renown. So don't make that mistake. Just upgrade everything to 10. That's like the baseline for doing level 100 mythic boss rushes. So you upgrade everything to 10. That costs you around 1000 renown per mercenary. And also remember to upgrade all of the treasures. The treasures are on the second page, and treasures also give stats to your mercenaries every time you upgrade them, even if you don't find them during the run. So all the treasures to 10 as well, so that you get that good baseline stats for your character. And once you have upgraded everything to 10 or everything to 15, if you have a lot of renown, then you start to think about, okay, what are the abilities that I'm actually going to use? And you start upgrading those. So for Gedon, that's obviously Inferno and the Mark of Conflagration equipment. Because Gedon is the heart of the fire comp, this is your main AoE damage dealer. You want to get these as high as possible. Mark of Conflagration is a little bit cheaper to upgrade than Inferno. Equipment is cheaper than abilities, and it also scales a little bit better. So in general, your Mark of Conflagration should be a little bit higher than your Inferno. And when it comes to the treasure pool, Gedon has one fire damage treasure, which is the fire staff. So you really want to upgrade that because fire Gedon double dips into fire damage, so fire damage is really, really good. Then, I mean, driving bomb is okay-ish, infernal combustion is okay-ish, but probably no reason to upgrade them more than, more than the general line that you choose for yourself so that you get those stat bonuses. So that's Baron Gedon, and Baron Gedon is the heart of your fire comp. The regular fire comp is built around Gedon and Ragnaros mainly, and that sort of still applies to Mythic. Because Ragnaros has the Blazing Rune equipment, and Blazing Rune equipment means that Ragnaros provides you with additional passive fire damage even before you get any treasures, and that just makes Ragnaros so good. Again, upgrade everything to 10, then start to think about, okay, what abilities am I going to use, and work on upgrading those. For Mythic Boss Rush, it works a little bit differently. For example, in my comp, I typically use Ragnaros to enable get on AoE, so I'm using Magma Blast, but sometimes, or depending, depends also on like how much renown you have. You can get to the point where you can do Mythic Boss Rush the same way as you do Regulus, so that you will have somebody to activate Gedon, then Gedon does AoE, and Rack finishes things off with Die Insects. I did not have enough renown to reliably get Die Insects to be strong enough, so yeah, Die Insects can still be useful at times, but it's a bit of hit miss. Like all of these Death Blow abilities in Mythic Boss Rush. They're really, really strong if you're able to activate them, but that typically means that you need to have a ton of renown. So Ragnar's Blazing Rune is by far the most important for Mythic Boss Rush, because again, this is enabling your Gedon. And on the treasure side, again, we get everything to 10, and then Elementary Studies is super, super good. Elementary Studies, passive fire damage, and humans and elementals gain health. Also a treasure that is available to multiple mercenaries, and if you level up a treasure for one of the mercenaries, it's leveled up for all the other mercenaries who share that treasure, so that also makes it really worthwhile to upgrade your treasures. Strength of the Elements, probably should not have upgraded that one so much. Those, those last six levels really didn't do much. Combustion like this, the rest are okay, it's pretty meaningless. It's elementary studies that you really want. As for the third slot, because you typically want a lot of damage mitigation for Mythic Boss Rush, healing isn't that effective, but damage mitigation is, I chose to go with Godgar. So Godgar with Blizzard, and then later on becoming Archmage Godgar, and then having Archmage Nova, means that Godgar is able to root enemies on turn 1 or 2. You can choose, you can cho use either Hardfire or Blizzard turn 1, and the other on turn 2, and then from turn 3 on you will have a root every single turn. So that's Gadgar's speciality. I upgraded Blizzard. I upgraded all of these abilities a little bit because when you cast Archmage Nova, 
when you cast Dark Mage Nova, then it uses all of these abilities at their upgraded ranks. So you're also going to benefit from Heartfire and even from Arcane Surge. Surge upgrade probably was useless though. Should have left that at 10, work more on Blizzard, Heartfire. And Katkar uses Bitter Chill equipment, so Katkar doesn't have an equipment that needs to be upgraded, other than, again, the baseline of getting everything to 10, or if you have more renown, everything to 15, so that you will get all of those stat bonuses. One of the really big things why I like Godgar in Firecomp is that Godgar has two fire damage treasures, because Godgar has access to elementary studies, same as Ragnaros, and Godgar has access to Atiesh. And this mode casts an ability gain plus fire and plus 10 frost damage. So Godgar just is the most reliable merc in the game to get a treasure that gives you more fire damage. So that's definitely an asset for Godgar. That tabard, well, it's at 15 because I played around with humans a little bit, so but not really necessary for the fire comp. So those three are my main characters, and then there's room for some more. I have Gigi on the bench. Why Gigi? Because my original idea was that using Gigi with Blazing Song and upgrading Blazing Band means that Gigi is going to get a lot of heal power, which means that on turn 2 Gigi is going to be able to do a big AoE, because AoE damage is super, super important. Sadly, Blazing Band is bugged currently and does not work, so Blazing Song doesn't deal that much damage or give that much heal power in the game, so Gigi doesn't work nearly as well as, as intended. On the treasure side, GC again has fire damage treasure, and GC also has a heal power treasure, which can then improve the damage of GC's own AoE damage. Another further upside of GC is that GC is a caster, and I currently have Medivh and Kuki on the bench for some passive buffs. So I have Medivh with Stuff of Atiyash, start of game effect to give friendly casters more stats, and that gives a lot of stats, very useful ability. And then you can sometimes do like GG get on Kadgar as well, and just get a lot of stats for everyone on the board. Furthermore, Medivh also has a start of game treasure, Graceful and Triumph. Start of game give your casters plus 10 spell power. So there's another way that you can gain more damage more spell power, even though Medivh never leaves the bench. As you can see, I have not upgraded my Medivh otherwise. And in the final slot, I have Kuki with appetizers. I have not upgraded Kuki otherwise, just getting that start of game buff. It all depends on how much renown you have, though. I know many people have multiple times as much renown as I do, and they just don't need stuff like Kuki and Medivh, because they can get so, many, so much stats on their base team that those just become unnecessary. Although Medivh, because Medivh has the start of game treasure and the equipment gives a lot more stats, then I suppose you always want to run Medivh and you rather cut Kugi if you need somebody to be added to the team. As a matter of fact, in the Saravan fight, my fire comp did not succeed because Saravan was able to kill two of my mercs at four speed. So there I needed to bring a taunt and I brought Cornelius because I had updated all of my holy comp, even though holy comp turned out to be bad, so don't do that. I could have also brought Mutanus potentially, if I had upgraded Murlocs. Anyway, I brought in a taunt and I brought that into Kuki spot, so that then, without Kuki, but with the taunt minion, I was able to get through Saravan. There are also two more fire mercenaries that I don't have in my team, but that you could have, and one of them is Belinda. Belinda obviously has Lesser Water Elemental. Lesser Water Elemental doesn't get a lot of stats, so it's always going to die turn one. That's a bit of a bummer, unless you find the Elemental Health Treasure, which makes it a lot better. And also Belinda's damage scaling is a little bit weak, so I'm not totally in love with Belinda. Although, obviously, getting this freeze on turn one can sometimes be really useful. It's a five speed freeze, so sometimes that just wins games. And Belinda, of course, has the flame dart in the potential like frost burn. And Belinda also does have two useful treasures, although only one of them is fire damage, and that is the weakest fire damage treasure. Just doesn't give you that much immediate fire damage. But the other, Stoneheart Salvation, after you cast a fire or frost ability, give your characters additional health, and that scales like crazy. It's much better than healing too, because you can use this, even if you go first, you get that extra health already, and then opponents might not be able to kill you. So Belinda does have some upsides, and I could consider using Belinda in fire comp. And the other potential merc that you could consider using is Yulon. Yulon with Jade Flame Buffet can activate the fire combos. As a downside, Jade Flame Buffet doesn't scale very well, so you don't get that much new health from it. And also as a big downside, Yulon does not have a fire damage treasure. 
So if you bring Yulon, you're basically using a slot where you cannot get more fire damage. So that's why I didn't include Yulon. So that's an introduction to fire comp in Mythic Boss Rush. The fastest comp there is. If fire is able to handle the fights, then fire can handle the fights real quick and deal tons of damage and very fun, quite powerful comp for Mythic Boss Rush. Thank you for watching. Click like and subscribe if you enjoyed this, and a special thanks to all of my Patreon supporters, YouTube members, and Twitch subscribers who make all of these videos possible.